Hello everybody, it's Crystal. Welcome to my channel, Maggie Day Crochet. So today I have a crochet tutor tutorial for you. A very, very easy, and actually you can use it like for lots of things. Um, so this is uh, multiple, I think that you can use it for multiple things. And you can make it as big or as small as you like. I think this would be great for um, placemats. It'd be great for on the back of your toilet. It'd be great for a coffee table. You want to make it longer, you know, keep going in rounds. Um, maybe a little shorter for the back of the toilet. I, I don't know about that. Um, everybody's is different, I'm sure. Place match. You can make a whole set of them. Great gift. Um, heck, you could just keep going and make it a baby blanket. I mean, that'd be super cool too. Multiple, multiple, whatever you can think of to use this for. It would be cool. Just on a table. Um, as decor. I think it's pretty. Um, and you know what it is? It's super simple. We got three regular granny squares in the center. And then we just seam them right there. That's the only only seam. And then we just start making those three grannies a big rectangle uh, granny. And then we add a scallop border. And it's finito. So this particular one right here uh, from scallop to scallop is 20 inches. And from scallop to scallop is 12. Of course, you can make yours as big or as small as you want, depending on what you're going to use it for. Um, this would make a beautiful bag as well. Um, oh man, I, I could have cut a little shorter. Oh man, lots of potential, lots of potential, really. I like it when, see my initial uh, thought was I'm going to make some placemats. And then I got to thinking, man, this could be used for so many things. I think I'm going to use this, um, and I'm going to put it on a table, like uh, a coffee, uh, not a coffee, but an end table or something like that. I think that's what I'm going to do with it. Um, because mine's a little bit bigger than what I would use for a placement, but everybody's different, so. Um, maybe I'll put it on the back of my toilet. My bathroom's pink. Of course it's pink, huh? It's pink. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I'll try that out. But, so, um, the yarn, I'll show you that I use, um, it was cotton or a cotton acrylic blend. Um, and some of them, it's like kind of scrappy, scrappy yarn. <laughs> um, but... I can tell you of this main color here, you're going to need, oof, for my size, I made mine a bit bigger than I intended, probably about 200 yards of that. And then of the pink, if you want to do it the way I did, you don't have to use the same colors and you don't have to do it like me, but I'm just kind of giving you an estimate of yardage for, for this so you can get, you know, get an estimate. The pink for the three flowers in the middle and the scallops took about 100 yards, man, 7,500 yards, 100 yards probably. And then um, the green, not much at all, 50, that's probably an overestimate. It's just one row around each granny, and then I seamed it with the with the green, but that's it. It's super pretty, I love it. You guys ready? Let's do it. And I can't wait to see yours, see what you do with it. I'm interested. I'm interested to see what people do and how they change things, like, and what, what you're going to make with it, or where you're going to put it. All right, let's do it. All right, so for this uh, project here, I kind of just have <laughs> some of this uh, scrap yarn, but it is all um, four-way cotton yarn. So while well, this one isn't a scrap, this is peaches and cream, um, uh, four-way cotton. The color of it is pastel pink. And I think this one's peaches and cream it doesn't have a label but it is cotton <laughs> it's a four weight cotton and this one i think is a can cake it could be uh an acrylic cotton but that's okay that's that's just fine but it was the only one that i could find <laughs> i'm sorry but uh, you can use scrap yarn on this see i'm using scrap yarn but it's all four way um and it's all cotton or cotton acrylic blend um and of course you don't have to use a four weight yarn and you don't even have to use cotton yarn I, i'm just using cotton because i'm just kind of trying to represent it as a placemat but you don't even have to use cotton for placemats so if you don't want to you use whatever you want all right and then oh my my cone fell in the garbage all right and then i'm going to be using a size h which is a five millimeter crochet hook so First off is what we're going to do is, so this is, you know, really basic, like I, like I said, I'm going to pop this label. We're going to start off with your center color, so I'm going to be using the pink in the center. You use whatever you want. 
and you know basic basic we'll make uh three basic grannies okay so we're gonna go ahead and start off with a slip knot on a hook <clears throat> now if you use the magic circle or the magic ring you can use that right now um, I'm not going to do that I'm gonna do a chain of uh, four one two three four I'm gonna slip stitch back into the first stitch to form my ring that I'm gonna be working in all right so I'm gonna chain one and that chain one does not count as a stitch all right doesn't count as anything so we're gonna be working back through the center of the ring and we want to yarn over and go through the ring and draw our yarn back through and we need to do a double crochet so that was a double crochet through the center of the ring and that is one stitch done so far because remember we don't count that single crochet now we're going to do two more doubles through the center of the ring all right so there's three doubles there that we put through the center of the ring now we're going to work a chain of two one two and now we're going to go back through the center of the ring again and we're going to work three more double crochets so there's one two three and if you need to slide this over that's fine i'm going to chain two again so those chain two spaces are our corners and we're going to go back through and work three more double crochet through the center of the ring there's one two three so we got three sets of three we need a total of four sets of three so one more time we're going to chain two and we are going to go back through the center of the ring and work three more doubles there's one two and there is three now I'm going to pull my tail and that'll close up that sort of center circle a little bit more and then we can always sew it together later. Now we need to end the round. Now I'm not going to chain two and slip stitch to end the round. That's not generally how I end the round on um, granny squares. What I'm going to do is a half a double crochet into the very first double and that's going to act as our chain two. So um, go ahead and yarn over and go into that first double crochet that we made and half double crochet now that half double is acting as our chain two space now the reason why I do that is to make the granny square as seamless as possible so we won't have any slip stitching a minimal amount of slip stitching so what we need to do now since we did it that way um, we are now smack dab in the middle of this chain two so we're going to go around again we're going to start with a chain one and that chain one doesn't count as a stitch so these four spaces are our corners now the corners are always worked the same except for the first corner the first corner that we do is different because like i said i, I try to eliminate as many seams as possible so that means that the first corner we do it is done a little, di little bit differently than the other ones we're going to put three double crochets right back into that spot so there's one two and there is three now I'm not going to chain one in between my uh sets of uh, three double crochets if you make granny squares a lot and you chain one by all means you can make your granny square however you make it but what i'm going to do is jump right over here to the next uh corner space and in that i'm going to work three double crochets so there's one 
two, three, and then I'm going to slide that over a bit. I'm going to chain two and go back into the same space again and work three more double crochets. So that's how the corners are made. Three doubles, a chain of two, and three more doubles all into the same chain space. So what we kind of did on that first one is we just did half of the corner and we make it back around. We'll finish out the other half. All right, that way we won't have no much bunch of slip stitching to do. All right, so now I'm gonna jump to the next chain two space. I'm not gonna chain one here. And I'm gonna work my three double crochets. There's one, two, three, I'm going to chain two, go back into the same spot again, and work three more double crochets. There's one, two, and three. All right, come over here to this next chain two space. I'm going to do the same thing again. Go into it three doubles. There's one, two, three, chain two, and three more doubles. There's one, two, and there's three. Like that. All right, so we're coming up here to where we started, and we had we had put uh, three double crochets here, so that was like half of the corner. Now we're going to finish out the other half by putting three double crochets into the space. Now, normally, I would just half double crochet again into the first double crochet. And continue and just you know repeat that again but I'm going to switch colors now and when I switch colors I don't do the half double I hope that's not confusing you can do it a different way if you'd like when I switch colors I just go ahead and do the chain two and then I slip stitch into my first double crochet like that and I'm going to go ahead and clip that color off And I'm going to start with another color. I'm going to be using the green now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my green color in and you could start in any, I'm just going to do one round with the green. You can do more if you, you, can do more if you want. It's your placemat. You do it however you like. But I'm going to start in any chain two space. And since I'm only going to do one round, I'm just going to go ahead and do the full uh, corner here. So in this chain two space, I'm going to work three doubles, a chain two, and three doubles. So I chained one, which does not count as a stitch. Go back in and I'm going to work one, two, three, chain two, and three doubles. Just one round of, of the green is what I'm going to be doing. Now I'm going to jump over to the space in between these sets of double crochet. Now it's not a chain one, but it's a visible space. And I'm just going to put three double crochets in that space. There's one. There's two. And there's three. And then I'm going to jump over here to the next chain two space and I'm going to do what we do at the chain two spaces, which is three double crochets, a chain of two and three more double crochets. So there's one, two, three, chain two and three more. One. two, three. And we're going to repeat this all the way around. 
So again, I'm going to jump over here into this space that's in between our next sets here, right here, and work three doubles. One, two, three, and then my next space is the chain two space, so that's the corner. So it gets three doubles, a chain two, and three doubles. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat this pattern all the way around. Um, until I get to the end. Like I said, I'm only going to do one of the green, but like I said, you feel free to do as many as you like. So again, I will put three double crochets here, and then three doubles, chain two, three doubles here, three double crochets here, and then we'll be back at our starting point, and that's where I'll meet back up with you. All right, so I'm coming here to the end of my square with yarn everywhere. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end by slip stitching into my very first double crochet and I'm going to tie this collar off. And you want to make three of these exactly the same. So, once you tie them off, you can hide your tails. Like I said, we can, if you didn't use the magic circle, which I don't ever do, uh, we can close up that center circle real quick here with the uh, yarn needle. Just load her up and just go right around it. Well, close it up a little bit better than what it is anyways. And hide in the tail at the same time. So, as I mentioned, you want to make three of these exactly the same. And then we'll need to sew them together. I always go around a ring like that, and then I go back the opposite direction once, and then and that one, Flip that tail. All right, I'm gonna hide the rest of my tails. I have my uh, my three made, so you go ahead and I'm gonna hide my tails, get your three made, and then we will do a little quick sew, um, a little quick seam on here, and then we'll continue with a uh, different color yarn. All right, so I'm gonna seam these up real quick uh, with the mattress stitch. You can seam them up any way you want though. We're just gonna do a quick seam um, here and here. So I have, um, I'm just gonna grab these two. I have the front sides are facing out. So I got some yarn, green yarn on yarn needle. And I am going to start in, um, let's see, we got the chain two spacer. I'm going to start in the chain that's closest to the first stitch and I'm going to go into um, when you're doing a mattress stitch it's always hook goes um, into the stitch. We never come up underneath. All right. I'm going to go into the the back loop of it. Hook, uh, needle going downward into that chain. And then I'm going to come over here on the corresponding piece. I'm going to find that same chain that's next to the first stitch. And I'm going to go, let me pull that through. Leave some tail there though. Don't put it in a knot or anything, but leave some tail. I'm going to find that same chain over here. And I'm going to go into the front loop of that one. Needle going downward like that. Pull it through. I'm going to come over the other side and I'm going to go into the next stitch. Always on the, the piece closest to you, you go needle down into the loop, one loop that's furthest away. Like that, back loop. And you go in it. And then on the next piece, you want to go into the corresponding stitch, so the same first stitch there but you go into the loop that is closest to you. Like that. And we just do this back and forth until we get to the end. So we come over here to the next stitch. This stitch right here, the loop that's back loop furthest away. Go through it. And then we go over to, that tail is always getting in the way at first. It's always causing problems. All right, and we go over to the next piece, find the corresponding stitch. 
And we go on the loop that's closest to us. Needle going downward like that. And we're going to do this all the way across. All right, so I'm going to continue this back and forth method in the same manner, making sure your stitches match up and making sure that your needle, you're always going um, down and not going up from the stitch. Um, and I'll meet up with you when we get over here to the chain space area. All right. All right, so I've made it through all the stitches and I'm at the chain space area. So we're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go into that first chain, um, the first chain space, the back loop of it on this side. And on the other side, the first chain, the front loop of it, like that. Now what you wanna do is take a piece so it looks like that <laughs> pull on your tails there we go all seamed up all seamed up and ready to go so what we're going to do though is uh i'm going to just uh weave this in just a bit up here um at this area to try to even it out because we're going to just going to after we're done we're going to sew the other one on the exact same way um I'm just going to go into, like, it doesn't have to be perfect. The next chain space over here and this chain space over here. And I'm just going to try to kind of sew it up just a bit tighter um, at the chain space areas there. At the same time, I'm going to hide my tail. So, again, I'm not doing a mattress just now. I'm kind of just trying to, I'm just sewing the end up a bit. So it's a little bit more even on the end. Because um, when we start our next color, we're just going to continue the granny stitch. So it'll, it's not going to be a square anymore. It'll turn into a rectangle. All right. So yeah, I'll just kind of fix that up a bit there. So it's a little bit straighter. Doesn't have to be perfect. Looks good. I'll do the other one the same way. And then you want to sew this one on the same way. All right. And then I'll be back up with you. All right. So all sewed up. Tails all sewed up. And there's the back. Here's the front. Now basically what we're going to do is pretty much the basic granny. But now since we have these three grannies sewn together. Um, it's going to turn into a rectangle. So let's go ahead and start the first row. After that it will be easy repeat. Starting uh, one of your chain two spaces here. Okay. And since I'm going to be using this color for quite a few rows, I'm going to do the half double uh, ending. So there's no seam. So in this first chain two space here, instead of doing um, three doubles, chain two, three doubles, I'm just going to start off with a chain one and put three doubles into the first spot. So it's kind of half of a corner here so three doubles there's one two and three and then we'll finish out the other half when we get back around all right now we're going to put a set of three double crochet in each of the spaces between our sets of three double crochets. Now I'm not going to chain one in between them. If you do normally chain one in between your grannies, feel free to do that. Everybody makes them different. I mean, there's like a thousand different ways to make granny squares. But, uh, so however you feel comfortable. I Sometimes I chain one in, in between them and sometimes I don't. So it really doesn't really matter. But this time I'm not going to. Just doing three there and I'm going to put three into the next space here I'm working off a cone here so I apologize it's harder to take yarn off a cone than it is from a ball all right now right here is where we seamed it up and where we seen it up, there are the two spaces where there, they were corners on our granny, on our granny squares. We're just going to treat them as 
spaces. So we're just going to put three doubles into this one. And then the next granny square over here where this, um, on the other side of the seam where it was a chain two space, we're just going to put three doubles into that one. that and now we're just going to continue along putting a three doubles in each of the spaces um, between until we get to our next chain two space so three doubles here and then we get over here again these were the corners of our granny so it's three doubles here three doubles here three doubles here, three doubles here, and I'll meet here, meet up with you at the corner, at the chain two space. All right, when you make it to the chain two space here of the corner, um, we're just gonna do what all the corners have been getting, which is three doubles, chain two and three doubles. That's what the corners are always gonna get, besides that first one, um, while we're using the same color anyways. a corner like that and then we're going to work across putting three doubles in the in between the sets of three doubles that space there in between them how easy is this huh something fun and quick and easy that would make a great gift and use up some scrap yarn All right, coming up to my next corner here. The same. Three doubles. Chain two. And three doubles. Now we're going to continue this pattern that we've been doing all the way around the rectangle here until we make it back to our starting point where we started with three double crochets into that first chain space. That's where I'm going to be back up with you. Remember, remember the corners get three double chain two three doubles besides that first one and then we're putting three doubles in each of these sets and then right here three doubles in each of those all the way around so I'll go ahead and meet back up with you here where we started all right so I've made it back around to my starting point and this is where we put three uh, double crochets here in the corner so we're going to go ahead and finish that corner off with another three double crochets in that same spot there's one this is how we're always going to end until we uh, switch colors up and of course you can switch colors anytime you want but like that three doubles and I'm going to put a half double into the first double crochet here and that will put us that's going to act as our chain two space oh there'll be no slip stitching um, over to the right spot or anything you can just start right here in the middle so we're just going to kind of repeat what we just did actually so again we'll start now it's just going to be repeats of this chain one and then the very first corner is always three doubles one Two, so that's half a corner we do three and now I'm gonna work across in each one of these spaces you see each one of the spaces jump 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 three doubles and then when we get into the chain the corner the chain two space three doubles chain two three doubles and then three doubles in each of the spaces corner three doubles chain two three doubles same on the other side three doubles three doubles three doubles three doubles three doubles three doubles all the way around until we make it back to our starting point and then we'll end it the same way we just did so I got my three doubles there that's my first uh, half of my first corner so I'm just going to begin 
my sets of three doubles and all these spaces all the way around. Like that. All right, I'll go ahead and meet back up with you at the beginning, show you how to end it again. All right, again, when you're coming to <clears throat> end your row, it's always the same. This is where we started. We put three doubles into that chain two space, and we're going to end it by putting three doubles in it. And instead of chaining two, we will half double crochet into the first double, and that will act as our chain two space to start us up for the next round. And that is what we're going to continue repeating. As you can see, I've done some rows. Um, you can do as many rows as you want for as big as you want it to be. Um, if you want the shell scalloped edging though, you will need to make sure, I'll let you know how many rows I do total. I'm not done yet, but if you <clears throat> want to make it a different size than me, you'll need to make sure that you have an odd number of spaces in between your chain twos, not counting the chain twos there will need to be an odd number between the between um, the chain two spaces, not counting those. That is if you want that scalp edge. All right, well, I'm going to continue going around again. You can change colors as often as you want. Remember, though, when I'm changing colors, you don't have to do the half double. You can just chain two, slip stitch, and cut off and tie again, or tie your new yarn color on. But I think I'm just going to continue using this color. Until I do that scallop edge, I'll bring the pink back in. All right, I'll let you know in a second how many total rows I do. All right, so I have done a total of this uh, cream colored um, eight rows. One, two, three, I'm sorry, seven rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And my eighth row will be the scalloped row. Now you can do as many or as few as if you want to make it smaller, if you want to make it bigger, whatever you want to use it for. Just remember um, that you need um, an odd number of spaces, not counting the um, chain twos to do the, the uh, shell row if you want to. So I'm coming here to the end of my seventh row. And instead of half double crocheting into that last stitch, since I'm changing colors, I'm just going to chain two and slip stitch into that last stitch. And clip that yarn off. All right. Now, if you want to do the scalp row or shell row or whatever it is. Um, so, I'm going to bring the pink back. Mine. Now I'm not going to start directly in a corner, all right? I'm going to start, so here's the chain two space. I'm going to start in the stitch right after the chain two space. So I'm going to go ahead and start my yarn there. I'm going to chain one, which does not count as a stitch. And I'm going to single crochet one time into that space. All right, and now we're going to start the repeat of what we're going to do all the way around. So the next space, we are going to work seven double crochets through it. So there's one, two, three, Getting hard. It'd be, it's a tight fit. All right, there's, <laughs> there's seven. Okay, and now we're going to single crochet into the next, uh, in in the next spot there, and that's the repeat. That's what we're gonna do until we get to the chain two space. So the next chain space here, or not sp chain space, but the next space, seven double crochets, and like I said, it's kind of a tight fit. There's 
seven. And the next one, right here, single crochet into that one. Now we're going to go ahead and repeat this. It'll be seven doubles here, single crochet, seven doubles here, single crochet all the way. And so we get to our chain two space. So the space before our chain two space should be a single crochet. And I'll meet you here at the corner and we will work around the corner. All right. And I'll show you how to do that. All right. So just keep, uh, continue that and I'll see you in a second. All right. So I've made it to the corner. So the only difference here in the corner is we're going to put nine double crochets into the corner, into the chain two space. I think we're gonna put I think we're gonna put nine. Let me make sure it lays flat. Alright, and then we would just single crochet into the next. Once we got it now. Give me one second here. Yep, 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 yep. That's what we're gonna do. Alright, we're gonna repeat that pattern all the way around. So again, we just single crochet there. So it'll be seven single crochet, seven single crochet, seven single crochet, seven single crochet, and in the chain two space, nine. So it's just repeating what we did here in each of the corners to get nine. And I'll meet back up with you here at the last corner. Okay, and we'll go ahead and end it off there. All right, I've made it all the way around and I did my nine doubles in that last corner. And I'm just gonna finish it off by slip stitching into that first single crochet and that will be it i'm going to hide any tails and i'll be finished i hope that you enjoyed my tutorial hope you were able to follow along if you make this or anything else from any of my tutorials please don't forget to show me a picture on my bag of day crochet facebook page there'll be a link to that below in the description box that turned out pretty <clears throat> multiple uses for it you know you can make more than one too smaller bigger be really pretty yeah across the coffee table or something mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right hey hit that like button if you enjoyed leave me a comment below that always helps me out thanks everybody for watching i'll see you next time take care